Thank you, Mr. Chairman and um, Secretary. Welcome. Thank you for your good job. I really believe you have a thankless job, but you've done a hell of a job. When I became ranking member of the Homeland Security Border Subcommittee, I made it my priority to visit every major port of entry on the southern border. I visited, met with men and women in uniform, both blue and green uniforms. I wanted to see what the job was about, what the challenges were. But Mr. Secretary, let's talk refugees. COVID-19 has changed the world. Today, we're probably seeing the biggest movement of refugees in recent history, if not in the history of the world. Title 42, when Title 42 was about to be lifted, everybody was expecting total chaos at the border. A week before that, a few days before that event, I went to San Isidro, myself and the border port director visited Mexico. We met with Mexican officials, federal, state, local, as well as Mexican stakeholders interested in making sure everything went well at the border. Everybody expected chaos. Title 42 was lifted, no chaos. Everything went unexpectedly well. I think you were the architect of that policy, carrot and sticks. You made sure that people had a pathway, had incentives to come legally, and you also put criminal sanctions on those that would break those laws. And of course, you also worked with some of our partners south of the border to make sure that this job was not just the United States, but that the burden was shared with other people like Mexico, Colombia, and other nations around the world. Mr. Mayorkas, you're doing a good job. So my question to you today is, how can we, U.S. Congress, assist you in doing a better job for the United States. Congressman, uh, thank you. We are taking the actions that we think will strengthen the security of our border, uh, uphold our values as well, uh, to the best of our abilities, operating within a broken immigration system. The most fundamental um, benefit that we could um, receive from Congress is legislative reform. You know, I'd like to see us move to an immigration reform. You were trying to say earlier, we have 12 million undocumented workers working in this country, some having been here for 10, 20, 30 years. No hope of an adjustment of status. We have another 10 million job openings in this country today. Let's quickly, in my last minute or two, talk about fentanyl. It's ruining Main Street back home, deaths. 80 to 90% of the fentanyl comes through our ports of entries. Yet right now, you only have enough funding to maybe inspect 2% of the vehicles coming through our ports of entry. Does that sound about right? Congressman, we have uh, harnessed advanced technology, most notably the non-intrusive inspection technology uh, to be a force multiplier for our personnel. We, we rely on funding from Congress for not only that technology, but also the personnel who operated, the, the extraordinary people of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, both our Border Patrol agents and our Office of Field Operations personnel, and So, Mr. Marine. Secretary, if we wanted to stop more fentanyl from coming into the country, I'd say you need more personnel, more technology, more of those drug-sniffing dogs that are so effective. You need more funding. We want to go from 2% of inspections to 4 to 6 to 10% of those vehicles being inspected. You need the funds. We, we do, Congressman, and it, it is a two-part challenge. It is addressing the supply, uh, which uh, your question is uh, focused on, of course, and we also have to address the issue of demand in this country. The, the scourge of drugs has been a long, enduring one, I will say. Uh, I prosecuted many. Um, narcotics trafficking cases in my time as a prosecutor, the toxicity um, of fentanyl is something I have never seen before. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for your good work. 
we want to partner with you to make sure we protect America from those negative elements coming into this country. Mr. Chair, I yield.